I have planned on this, but it is what it is. And I have got to go eat my food with potato salad. I would ask you to respect our privacy, but please, I don't respect people's privacy. That's why I do the hot topics. She's an icon, she's a legend, and she is the moment. I'm a wife. I am mommy. Mister. I just want to thank everybody for listening because although you might think I sit up here and diss and everything like that, I'm just a positive person trying to do a positive thing. Fish oil. Oh, she passed away? Oh. Mm. All right. Today could be the, be the day. Shut up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Somebody's going to get fired. Yes. Um, I think it should be you. Trey Songs was arrested yesterday for allegedly beating up a woman. Isn't he just so dreamy? A and by the way, welcome to the club. You know, I love the Rainbow Coalition, but there's nothing worse than having a gay man with you. Um. <laughs> hey, Wendy. Well, welcome to my formal apartment. Where will I go? I'm not sure. Europe, you know, the France, no longer many money, okay? <laughs> you know I have lymphedema. You know what that is, correct? I know. Lymphedema is this. Do you see this right here? Look. Right. Hold up, please. Look. Hold up. How are you feeling, um, just physically? Better than you. Get out. Oh my God, I gotta do that thing for Nickelodeon. Oh my God. I love you for watching. Today I wanna talk about Wendy Williams, okay? How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Everything. I'll tell you how I'm doing. Not well, bitch. Did you watch the documentary? I did. And it was bad. I had questions, lots of questions. And so I fell down the rabbit hole of researching and whatever. Let me get to the point because you guys already know what this is about. So the whole thing starts on July 18th, 1964, when Wendy Williams was born in Asbury Park, New Jersey. This makes her a cancer and very emotional. Uh, my star sign's cancer. And so we're criers. Uh, because you guys say I cry a lot. I've only cried 23 times in 500 shows. Wendy Whale Yums is a fat whale. Oh my God. Wendy was the black sheep of her family. She was the second of three kids. Now the thing with Wendy is ever since she was a little kid, she was very hyper to the point where doctors even talked about her needing to be on medication. And her parents even developed this code to tell Wendy to sort of tone it down when they were in public. So if she was being too loud, they would be like TL or TF meant too fast or TM meant too much. And they would say those things like TM, like calm down, like bring it down a notch. Wendy's parents were really, really into education. Her parents were teachers. Her dad became a principal and then he was the first black school administrator in his district in 1969. In 1970, there were these race riots in the area and her family moved from Asbury Park to Ocean Township, New Jersey, which was a nearby suburb. And this was like a upper middle class area at the time and it was predominantly white. And so the school that Wendy went to, she was like one of only four black kids in her class. So just like she stood out in her family, she also stood out in school. And on top of that, she was like the heaviest kid almost in her class. And this began her lifelong issues with body image and wanting to lose weight because her parents would weigh her weekly. Her mom put her on this diet where she had yogurt, tuna, mustard only, and grapes. And she developed some bad habits with that. She had disordered eating from a young age. Uh, she used to make herself throw up. And, you know, her brother even said that she smelled like it because she did it so much. The thing with Wendy is that she didn't fit in with the black kids because 
of her accent. They said she sounded like a white girl. And then when she hung out with the white kids, she didn't fit in with them either. And they would like even use the N word around her, but they'd be like, not you, Wendy. And so recurring theme here is that she never feels like she fully fits in. You would never know that though, because she was very outgoing, very talkative. It was almost like this shield that she would wear so people wouldn't know that she was insecure, having issues. She was just very loud and in your face. Wendy's sister got a scholarship when she was 16 years old to Tufts University to study law versus Wendy. She graduated 360th out of 363 students in her class. So according to Wendy, quote, there were three people academically stupider than me. She ended up getting into Northeastern University and getting into broadcasting and communication. While Wendy was at college, she developed a habit, a cocaine habit. Now, the thing with Wendy is that she did not do it socially or with people ever. In fact, she only did it alone and it was her secret. It was her thing. And so for years she did cocaine and nobody knew about it. And so she did this in college and then later on when she would start working, she was doing this as well, coke by herself. She got an internship at a radio station and everything she did was very strategic, okay? She even said, quote, virtually everything in my life I have plotted on to get it. Nothing has happened by fluke. What she wanted was to work at a radio station in New York. She ended up going to a bunch of different cities. Eventually she made it. She got a job at a radio station in New York. It would end up being known as Hot 97, which was a very popular radio station. But at this time when she got this job, it was called Hot 103. And they gave her the graveyard shift. And she was the only black person hired at the job. But again, she was used to being the odd one out. She didn't care. She got her job. This led to her having her own segment where she would talk about gossip and she would interview celebrities. And then something really bad happened. She said that an R&B artist called Sherrick R-worded her. She said, quote, he mesmerized me with his twinkling eyes. He flipped the interview around to where he was interviewing me. I was just gaga over this man. And he asked me to go to an opening party, an album release party with him that night. And before the party, I was date R-worded by him. She said that this also happened to her in college and that those types of things happen to girls all the time. According to Wendy, after she got R-worded by this R&B singer, she freaked out. She, this remember, this was during the AIDS epidemic. And so Wendy freaked out and she would go and get tested every month. But also this paranoia and panicking led her to do more cocaine. This whole experience ended up pushing her deeper into her cocaine addiction. She started doing more cocaine. She lost like 50 pounds, which again, due to her body image issues and stuff, only reinforced it. Like she thought that was good. And so she wanted to keep doing it to keep losing weight. It was a vicious cycle. Wendy also says that she ended up getting pregnant by an R&B singer and then having an abortion. It got to the point where, quote, she was snorting or smoking two grams of coke a day, four days a week. During her shift, she would play an extended track of Noel's Silent Morning, which gave her just enough time to sneak into the bathroom and get high. One night, she took a hit so hard that it knocked her unconscious, and when she came to, the air had been dead for more than three minutes. Fortunately, her bosses weren't listening. She was fired not long afterwards. What am I going to do now? She asked a boss through tears. Go get married and have some babies, he advised her. Well, Wendy didn't do that. Instead, she ended up getting a job at another radio station. This was... 98.7 KISS FM, also in New York. I just want to say everybody who listens to KISS FM, we do thank you for your support. We do love you and we couldn't do it without you. And we work for you. I told you this is my show, move. <laughs> I'm just 
on Kiss FM, she had a show called Dish in the Dirt where she would gossip about celebrities. Okay, this is when she started making enemies in Hollywood. The ratings for Kiss are doing really, really well. I just want to thank everybody for listening because although you might think I sit up here and diss and everything like that, I'm just a positive person trying to do a positive thing. I'm trying to have a little bit of fun and make my mark in the world. Thank you very much for listening to Kiss. Really. <laughs> Why do you diss people? Oh, Ralph, let me tell you something. I heard something about you. It got to the point where people were threatening her life. They were sending like dead fish to the radio station. It was bad. Her niche, I guess you could call it, became speculating, insinuating, and accusing specific men in the hip hop world of being gay. Well, he's oh, Which at that time it was very like anti-gay, kind of still is, but at that time it was really anti-gay. And for her to make this sort of accusation, whether it was true or not, would be very damaging to their career. And so these rappers would get pissed after she would say something. So like, for example, the first time she really did it was she was at this photo shoot, right? And she saw this magazine, it was a hip hop magazine, and it had this article that was talking about, you know, a gay rapper in the industry and speculating who it could be. And so Wendy read this article live on the radio, <clears throat> excuse me, and then started speculating on who it could be. And she was saying like that Puff Daddy was gay. She really was the first person to publicly state that Puff Daddy was gay. And as we know now, that's been said about him so many times. There's even this new lawsuit. Oh my gosh, whatever, side note. Even Tupac, the rapper, when he went to prison, she said that she heard that he got violated in prison and was saying stuff like that. And then he got mad. He made like a diss track about her, turned into this whole thing. But Wendy didn't care. She was actually happy. She's like, like they're rapping about me. They're talking about me. So like a win's a win. And what ended up happening was as much as she was making enemies, she was getting viewers, whether they listened to her while they hated her or they actually liked her, they were listening. And that's all that mattered to Wendy and all that mattered to the radio station too. Although these celebrities wanted Wendy Williams fired, instead she actually won an award from Billboard in 1993 for Best On-Air Radio Personality. So it was also around this time that Wendy got engaged and then later married to an account executive at the radio station where she was working, and his name was Bert Grigori. Well, his full name is Bertrand J. Grigori, but he went by Bert. They got married, but the wedding didn't last. Not the wedding, sorry. The marriage didn't last. Only five months it lasted. And the reason for that, it, it depends who you talk to. Because Bert, he first of all says he had no idea that Wendy had a cocaine problem, which remember, she secretly did it. She was still doing it at this time, but he said he didn't know about it. Wendy said that the reason why they split up was because he spit in her face. And he said that he knew that the relationship wasn't going to work because she was all about the fame and they just weren't aligned is what he said. But in any case, they divorced soon after. After Wendy gets divorced, right, she's still focusing on her career and she's still doing cocaine. Okay, she called it the white lady. And Wendy would take the white lady with her on her trips because she was working on the radio, but then she was also doing appearances and going out clubbing and driving from city to city to do all of that. So she said that she would be like driving from from one city to the next for a gig and she would stop on the highway to do lines of cocaine and then continue driving and she did this for a long time and that's kind of the pattern here when you look at Wendy's life is that she was always working always partying non-stop all the time just go 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 and so eventually in 1994 Wendy meets a man, okay, at a roller rink in New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey, New Jersey. 
She meets him in New Jersey. His name is Kevin Hunter. And he would end up being, eh, the worst thing that ever happened to her and her second husband. According to Wendy, she liked Kevin because he was big and strong and had like a fug vibe. He, at the time, owned a beauty salon. Wendy and him hit it off right away. And according to Wendy, he did not like that she did drugs and she quit because of him. She said she didn't go to rehab or anything. She just decided like because of Kevin and him not wanting her to do it, that she was going to quit. According to her friends, they say, well, all she really did was trade one addiction for another. So instead of being addicted to cocaine, now she was addicted to Kevin. And her friends say he was just as bad for her as cocaine. So soon after that, Wendy left Kiss FM and then she went back to her old New York station, the one that um, fired her, which was Hot 97. At the time that she worked for them before, it was Hot 103, but now it was Hot 97, okay? And by the way, these two uh, radio stations are actually owned by the same company at this point. So she ends up going back to Hot 97. You used to see her. She used to kiss you all the time, but now she's hot as hell on Hot 97. What's up, girl? Hi. Wendy, what's going on with you, man? How do you like the transition you made? Well, the transition was a corporate move, as a lot of you all probably already know. Hot and Kiss are owned by the same company. And at this time, it's very popular. And so was Wendy. She's making a name for herself. I, however, which a lot of you don't know, worked at Hot 97 six years ago when it was dance music. And I did overnights, midnight to 5.30. Then I blew up a kiss. And now I'm back at Hot. And I'm loving it. During this time, Wendy continued her reputation of talking about celebrities and gossip and being kind of like cutthroat in the way that she would interview celebrities just like asking them crazy shit to their face no no reservations whatsoever and she also had this website at the time called gowendy.com which was kind of like TMZ before TMZ was a thing like it was a gossip website and they would have pictures and stuff and Wendy actually mentioned this website on the air and it got her suspended from the radio station in April of 1997. That same year, Wendy got suspended again from the radio station and it had to do with her website again. Uh, this time her colleague, Angie Martinez, who is another famous like radio DJ host, she was dating a rapper at the time called Q-Tip. And on Wendy's website, she was basically insinuating that the rapper Q-Tip was gay. And so she got backlash from that and the network suspended her again. Well, when she came back from her suspension, <laughs> she ended up starting a beef with Puff Daddy again because he obviously already didn't like her. And he had this girl group total it was an rmb group and it was signed to his label bad boy records and the band members from total they supported wendy's suspension so when wendy came back on the air she called them broke hoes and they were trying to like fight her and it pissed puff daddy off or diddy or whatever his name was at this time well a year after she called Total Broke Hose, Wendy gets in trouble again. This time she's going to get fired. And again, it has to do with her website. Her website had posted a photo of someone that looked like Diddy, like basically in a sexual act with a man. And according to Wendy, this was the reason she got fired. At that time, he was much more successful. She believed he had more sway or pull or influence and that he was behind her getting fired for that post. A few weeks after she got fired from Hot 97, Wendy ends up going to another radio station, but now she's no longer in New York. She's in Philly and she's at Power 99 in Philadelphia, which at the time was like the 14th radio station. And after she would go there, it would shoot up to being the second in the nation at the time with ratings. She then marries Kevin and he becomes her manager and her agent. They decide they want to start a family, but Wendy has a hard time with that. She ends up having a few miscarriages and then finally she gets pregnant again. And this would be a successful pregnancy for Wendy, but a very difficult pregnancy. Three months into the pregnancy, she gets put on bed rest. For the rest of it so she has to literally be 
on bed rest for six months. And so she tells the radio station that like, I need to be on bed rest. Can I do the show from my bed? And they agree. She also decides to not have sex with her husband, you know, to, to, to ensure the pregnancy is successful. And she ends up gaining a hundred pounds during the whole thing. But in the year 2000, she gives birth to a healthy baby, her son and her only child, Kevin Jr. Well, two months after giving birth, Wendy Williams, in the middle of the night, catches her husband, Kevin, talking nasty on the phone to some woman. And she is like, oh my God, he's cheating on me. And she has this moment where she's like, what do I do? I literally just had a baby, my miracle baby. She's already feeling bad about herself because she gained all this weight. She already has issues like body image issues and all this crap. So she's feeling like shit about herself. And she's like, we haven't had sex in six months and I've gained a hundred pounds and I just gave birth. And what am I going to do? Like blow my life up right now. He's my manager. He's my husband. Like she's like, I've got to stay. Like I have to make this work. So she ends up forgiving Kevin and staying with him. But also, now that she's given birth, she starts drinking again, allegedly. What I found online was that actually in 2011, she, I mean, not 11, oh my gosh, in 2001, she allegedly did like a brief stint in rehab. Here's going to be the beginning of a common theme with Wendy is when her personal life is going like this, her career is going like that and vice versa. Unfortunately, at the end now, it's both are nose diving, but there was this pattern where it was like personal life here, career here. And that happened in this situation where she found our husband's cheating and all this shit. But at the same time, she has now taken Power 99 from Philly this radio station was ranked 14. It's now ranked second. And so guess what? The radio station in New York wants her back. Kiss FM, not Hot 97, Kiss FM wanted her back. And Wendy always wanted to be in New York. She felt like that was just like the pinnacle. So she decides, okay, I'm going to move back to New York. She ends up hosting this show called the Wendy Williams Experience and this would end up being a very popular show. This is Kanye today and you're listening to the Wendy Williams Experience live from New York. Guess what's going on in the show today? I'm interviewing Mace. Not for nothing, but you were the originator of, and, it, and pardon me for saying this, but the retarded flow. Do you understand what I'm saying, Mace? Mace, you understand what I'm... Thank you, Dr. Pastor. <laughs> it's not my intention for the show to be controversial. Just like she did before, she brought her husband with her. And the thing is, is that nobody liked him. Expecting my husband to arrive any moment. We had a conference room full of people. And I'm a little bit antsy because I have a problem with being late for anything. They said he was mean and rude. And we get into these shouting matches with people. And that he wasn't even qualified to be there. But because he was Wendy's husband, he was tolerated until he wasn't. At one point, he was actually banned from the show, or sorry, from the station. He was banned from the station, but not before he did a lot of fucked up shit that would end up in this lawsuit allegedly, but I'm getting ahead of myself. At this point, Wendy is doing her thing, right? She's talking shit, getting good ratings, making enemies. And then in 2003 comes this huge moment in her career, which she calls the crowning jewel moment of her career, which is the Whitney Houston interview. Just to give you some context so that you understand why this was such a big deal. At this time, Whitney Houston was coming off of a very bad interview that she had with Diane Sawyer, the crack is whack interview. Whitney dying, crack rehab fails. First of all, let's get one thing straight. Crack is cheap. I make too much money to ever smoke crack. We don't do crack, we don't do that. Crack is whack. So Whitney had an album to promote and her team obviously wanted her to do radio interviews and they wanted her to go to Kiss FM because it was one of the popular radio stations. But when her team found out that Wendy Williams would be doing the interview, they didn't want to do it. But for some reason, 
Whitney Houston herself ended up calling the radio station and talking to Wendy on the phone. So Wendy and Whitney end up having this 23 minute call, which was wild. Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Do you regret Diane Sawyer interview? No, why should I? Well, it didn't exactly show you in the best light. You don't think so? Well, you know, Wendy, you don't show yourself in the best light. People still listen to you. You know, we just don't get to see your face, but they should know what you look like. I understand that, uh, Whitney. Perhaps one day I will have a TV show. Is there drug use going on at this present time? Who are you talking to? To you, Whitney. You. No, you're not talking to me. I was a full-blown cocaine addict. So well, I, I, I'm not mine. Move on. Did you ask God to help you? And No, I, I managed, thank God, because I have a good man. And, so and they're saying that um, you're doing some massive budget cuts. Where, uh, you cut your mother's... Um, See, you don't know what the f allowance. You don't make me curse on the radio. Okay. He and also don't anybody else ever think I do that to my mother, you low down dirty How is Bobby Christina doing? Growing and being a beautiful young lady that God sent her here to be. Mm. When your husband was um, incarcerated, what types of things do you tell her? Talking to her. We told she was she's a spare patient. She's a child who has intelligence. Shush your mouth. I talk to her like she's an intelligent human being, okay? You are very defensive, Whitney. I have to be, Wendy. You talk about me every fing day. When's the last time you talked to Robin? About a week ago. Ah. And you're going to be 40 this year, right? Oh, tell the world, why don't you? <laughs> oh, you low down dirty dog. The only thing is that you said, um, Whitney will never be fat. No. I'm just like, how dare her? Never. I just won't be fat. Sorry, not good, not healthy. Have you ever heard anybody being fat, being healthy? Well, you smoke weed? Oh, shit. <laughs> Mariah Carey was on the show and said that she loves you more than ever. I love that little lamb chop. She denied her breast implants. Do you deny yours? <laughs> No. Just that at one point when you lost so much weight, though, they did look like two baseballs on a stage. Yeah, they looked really weird. I'm sure that when you look at yourself in the mirror, you have some reservations about your looks, too. Absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love you, but I don't live for you. I don't live for you. You talk about me. You you, you call me out my name. You make my father sick. You make my brother sick. You make my childhood. You ain't gonna say you never see me in your damn life. But you talk about me. And if I was really like that back in the day, and I'd meet you outside. I'd meet you outside. But I'm a lady and I have a class. Well, how will you be spending Valentine's Day? With my husband. I bet you all have wild circus sex, don't you? <sighs> Oh my God. Well, you don't make me meet you outside. You, you, could, you could picture it, couldn't you? Yeah, you were such a. Whitney, I want to thank you. Thank you, Wendy. For giving me this moment and not hanging up the phone. No, I wouldn't do that to you, baby. You know, why could you say, baby girl? But Whitney, watch what you do. You don't even know what I do. Like you said, you never met me. You don't know me. You ain't been in my house. You don't live with me. You don't sleep with me. You don't do shit with me. But talk about me. But Whitney. What, baby? I would love to have you come in the studio. Okay, love. We'll we'll make you. It big. you call my machine, I'll call yours. I love you, Whitney. I love you too, Wendy. You take care. You too, baby. Bye. Be blessed. For Wendy, this was a huge moment in her career. She went from being famous on the radio to being mainstream well-known. I'm Wendy Williams, welcome to our home. It's kind of gaudy, but I like it that way. Come on. <laughs> well, I'm not one to talk, but take a guess. Is this where I look crazy like Mariah Carey? Oh my gosh, this is my husband, everybody. The most Love expensive this. bottle of champagne that you basically could get in the, in the world right now. Krug. I love this. This is like maybe $500 retail. She was very open about her life, like the good, the bad, the ugly. She talked about her cocaine addiction. She talked about how her husband, Kevin, cheated on her and how she decided to stay with him. She talked about all the plastic surgery she got after the baby, her boobs and the lipo and the tummy tuck. And she was just very open about it. And so she thought, I guess, that since she was open about her life, she could then dig into other people's lives, no problem. Although she was open about all those things, the one thing she kept very secret was her husband's abuse, basically. And this was something that comes up often about Kevin Hunter. Okay, I want to read you a quote. It says, Hunter's temper, according to sources, could turn violent. One night, around 2007, an associate witnessed Hunter acting aggressively towards Williams at a nightclub. When the couple left the club, Hunter hit Williams in the back seat of the car, according to a former friend who was with them. The blow to Williams' mouth was so severe, there was blood everywhere. When they got to a midtown parking garage, Hunter grabbed Williams and pulled her into the bathroom, said the former friend. The parking attendant called the police. 
no charges were filed. Charlemagne the God, who's another radio personality that's very well known and used to work with Wendy, said about her husband, quote, I don't fuck with Kevin. I think he's a terrible human being. And he said, I will just tell you that I hope Wendy Williams wakes up before one day she doesn't wake up. So I also found this article from 2005, which was like around the time she was doing this show and was with Kevin, where the article was like talking about how successful she was, but it kept coming up that she was like crying throughout the whole interview. And I thought it was interesting. I want to read you from some uh, excerpts from the interview. It says, it's a few hours before the start of her WBLS radio show and Wendy Williams, who calls herself the queen of radio, is in tears. I can't quite figure out why. It's not an isolated outburst. Over a couple of hours, she wells up four or five times. Why the emotion? I ask at one point, confused. Wendy pauses, which is rare. There are wars in my head, she confides. Radio wars? Not so much, she says. Wendy is 40, though she doesn't like to admit it, and has been in radio for two decades. Radio she can handle. Then what? I can't imagine. I'm still managing to be traditional, Wendy quietly assures me. You know, the kid, the husband, the house, the morals. Every day is a struggle to hold it all together, she says as she wipes a tear from the corner of her eye. A few years after this interview, okay, there would be a lawsuit from a talent uh, producer at this show that worked with Wendy and her husband that made crazy allegations of things that happened during the time of this interview that I just read to you. She sued Wendy, her husband, and the company that owned the radio station for $5 million for um, sexual harassment and discrimination. Her name, by the way, is Nicole Spence. She says, in or about August 2004, I began working for WBLS as an intern for the radio program, The Wendy Williams Experience. Because of my exemplarily, exemplarily, exemplary work performance in or about May 2006, I was promoted to the position of talent booker slash publicist, also known as talent producer for the Wendy Williams experience. Mr. Hunter repeatedly sexually propositioned me at work in the most crude and vulgar ways, telling me over and over that he wanted to fuck me. Mr. Hunter also made demeaning personal comments to me, including that I needed a real man in my life to mold me into the woman that I am supposed to be, proclaiming, of course, that he was that man. Ms. Williams, for her part, has aided and abetted the harassment and abuse that I and other female employees were subjected to by her husband and manager, Mr. Hunter and even offered to take me shopping so I could dress, quote, like a sexy little bitch, end quote, as Mr. Hunter demanded. He also physically threatened me, specifically on one occasion after Ms. Williams and her co-host consumed alcoholic beverages during the show, Mr. Hunter charged at me while threatening to inflict physical harm upon me. I also feared Mr. Hunter because he repeatedly physically assaulted Ms. Williams at or near the WBLS studio. In one instance, Mr. Hunter stormed into the studio, demanded that the other employees leave, and openly physically abused Ms. Williams, pinning her against the wall with his hand around her neck, choking her while repeatedly pounding his fist into the wall directly by her head. In another incident, Mr. Hunter reportedly punched Ms. Williams in the face and violently attacked her in the parking lot across the street from WBLS, which is frequently used by company employees. This lawsuit was filed in 2008, and at the time, Wendy and Kevin denied the allegations, and the lawsuit ended up getting settled. This all happened in 2008, which is when Wendy Williams got her big break for her TV show. In 2008, in the summer, she got a six-week trial run, and if the ratings were good, she would get a full-time TV show, and they were, and she did. Wendy Williams officially had a TV show on Fox. Just like Wendy did with her radio show and stuff, she negotiated to have her husband, Kevin, you know, be part of it, but this time he got the title executive producer of the TV show, even though he didn't have any experience being an executive producer or even on TV at all. According to one former employee, quote, he has no life without her. He didn't even own a computer when I worked for him. 
but it didn't matter. He was executive producer, 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 and he was living lavish. Okay. That's why I said producer, because I was thinking about lavish. He was showing up to Wendy's job, which also I guess was his job too, because he was executive producer, um, you know, like a green Ferrari and he was wearing fur and he was like smoking weed at the office, walking around holding a tequila bottle, like while everyone was working, he didn't really do anything except for yell at Wendy and tell her like not to talk to people and not to drink because Wendy wanted to drink and liked to drink. Even the interns and stuff, she would have them sneak her alcohol, but Kevin wouldn't let her do that. Even though he could do it, she couldn't, right? And he would be like, you have to go perform, be on the air. You know, according to a former intern, quote, she would hide in the bathroom and tell me to knock on the door when he left the office so she wouldn't have to see him, said the intern who added that it was common for Hunter to pull Williams into a private room and for staff to hear them fighting. You'd hear slaps or some type of tussling going on, said the intern. There was definitely a point when we were scared to go to work. And the thing with Kevin is he loved talking down to Wendy too. Like he would yell at her in front of everyone and be like, stop being a fat ass when she was like eating something that wasn't on her diet or whatever, like always trying to cut her down. Another thing he would do is like, he would not let her socialize or get close to anyone. Like always tried to isolate her. So it says here, when she tried to socialize with the crew, Williams says Hunter would wave her back into her office. A former staffer describes Hunter as a horrific force who would disrupt meetings and berate people. According to the former TV producer, Hunter tried to keep Williams from fostering close relationships. When she and a show wardrobe stylist developed a rapport, Williams took care to keep it secret, said the ex-TV producer. Once they went to a designer showroom in Manhattan and the stylist drove Wendy back home in New Jersey, Wendy asked to be dropped off a block away so Kevin wouldn't see that she was in the car with the stylist said the former TV producer, adding that Hunter eventually found out and the stylist was let go from her position shortly after. So while all this shit is happening behind the scenes, okay, Wendy's career, skyrocketing. Remember I told you, personal nosedive, career, I don't know, upswing. And she, her ratings, they were getting better every season. She was, the show was getting renewed all, all the time, right? Because the ratings were good. And she was also parlaying this into success in other areas. So she was releasing books. Like she had nonfiction books, fiction books. She was on Broadway. She did a little stint on Chicago, that uh, Broadway show. And then she was on Dancing with the Stars. And Artifacts from her show, like a bedazzled microphone, were at the Smithsonian. She even had a street named after her in her hometown. And she had a wig line because wigs were such a big part of her show. She would say that she was a wiggy and she had a wigologist. And there was a segment on her show called Hairpiece Theater. And she would always do this like thing where she would like lift up her wig and pull out a little note and then read the note. I, I, I used to love that when she would do that. And then she would also adjust her wig all the time. Like it was never the secret, like, oh, she's like secretly wearing a wig. No, no, no. She like fully embraced the wig. It was 2016, right? Times were changing. Cancel culture, Me Too movement, um, Shit was not acceptable in the way that it was when she was a shock jock in the 90s on the radio. She was on a daytime talk show and the shit that she was used to saying and getting away with was not flying anymore. And so she was constantly getting backlash for comments that she was making. For example, in 2016, there was this thing that happened with the singer Kesha where she sued her... Um, producer, Dr. Luke. She said he R-worded her and she wanted to get out of a contract that she had with him. He denied the allegations, countersued her for defamation. And so Wendy on her show commented on the situation and she said, if everybody complained because somebody allegedly sexually abused them and was ripping them off, then contracts would be broken all the time. If she and her mom were so close, Kesha's no spring chicken. I mean, she's like, 30 years old. So she wasn't stupid 10 years ago and neither was her mother when the sexual abuse, alleged sexual abuse started. Why weren't they rolling camera on it? End quote. 
So people got pissed. They're like, you're victim blaming and like, what the hell? You're expecting them to be able to record this? Like, who knows this is going to happen when it happens and blah, blah, And so the backlash was really bad. Wendy had to come out and be like, I'm sorry. You know, like, I support Kesha. At around this time, also, were rumors that Wendy's husband, Kevin, had a mistress. Uh, this woman, she was a massage therapist and she wasn't just a fling. She was like his girlfriend and, you know, a mistress. And the worst part about it is that everyone at her job knew except for her. So someone said here, uh, someone, a former staffer at the Wendy show said, quote, everyone knew about his girlfriend and it was hard for people who were closer to Wendy to keep that from her. I think she didn't have any life outside of him and he controlled her completely. Wendy Williams ends up hiring a private investigator and confirming that not only is he cheating on her, but he bought a house with her. This backwards Barbie. He was tricking up money. She's in the passenger seat of my Rolls Royce Ferrari. Really? The house is like less than 10 miles from her house with her husband. And so like Wendy goes over there. I went to the house, a beautiful house with a three car garage. I was cupping my eyes at every window. Oh, hmm, okay. Pulled out my spray paint. <laughs> And I spray painted Kevin and Wendy forever. And I had my Gorilla Glue, which is fabulous. I glued the mailbox closed <laughs> with the Gorilla Glue. <laughs> she doesn't leave him, though. On her show in 2017, she said, I stand by my guy. I couldn't call my mom, my dad, my sister. They would have just said, just leave. And I'm like, uh, but I'm still in love. I don't know what to do. Like, are you serious with this? Wendy turned a blind eye to the situation. Okay. I don't know why, but she did. And her thing was fine. Okay. If he's going to have a mistress, let him have a mistress. But her hard line was do not get her pregnant. That was her boundary. In 2017 was Wendy's downfall, literally. She fell. Our first caress. <laughs> the show was live. It cuts to commercial for like six minutes. And then when they come back on the air, Wendy Williams is like, oh, I'm sorry. I just overheated. That was not a stunt. I'm overheated in my costume when I did pass out. But you know what? I'm a champ and I'm back. You know what I found? Like the weirdest, eeriest quote ever. I found this article years before she fell and it was talking about how busy she was and go, go, go and all that. And it, she literally said years before, quote, one day I will pass out and I want them to keep the cameras rolling. I've already told them, just pull down my skirt. Yeah, I mean, it goes to show you, like, she was burning the candle at both ends. We would later find out that it was Kevin who basically pressured her into finishing the show, when really she should have just taken a break because it wasn't just I overheated, it was that she was sick, she was not doing well. At this time, her son, who was, you know, her whole world had gone off to college, so she was having this empty nest syndrome or whatever it's called. And her husband is having an affair. And so she finds herself at home alone a lot and she starts drinking. So she's drinking. She is not being very healthy. She is not resting. She is working really hard all the time, going live, filming one show and then another show and then going home and drinking and waking up early and doing that over and over and over again, day after day after day. And so she freaking passed out and could, her body just gave out. Her husband ends up basically tricking her into going to rehab. She thinks they're going on this like romantic trip to Florida and they're like on the private jet. And instead he takes her to a rehab and they like confiscate her phone. And according to Wendy, she believes he did this because quote, see, he needed someplace to shelter me so I wouldn't hire PIs, read magazines and talk on the phone and catch him in the act. She had taken a hiatus from the show. So when she returned, she explained to her audience that she had Graves disease, which was related to her thyroid. And that's what was causing her eyes to bulge. And the thing is, 
it didn't last long before Wendy went on another hiatus. And when she returned, she told her audience that she was now at a sober living home facility. And like basically living at a sober house. I don't know why I said that word. I have been living in a sober house. Nobody knew because <clears throat> I look so glamorous out here. It was also around this time that Wendy Williams found out that her husband had gotten the mistress pregnant. And remember I told you that was a hard line for her. That was her boundary. She was willing to accept all kinds of shit, but not that. And so she filed for divorce April 2019. I am divorced. You will not get away with trying to pull off having two families, you dirty, low down dog. A week after she filed for divorce, Kevin was fired from the Wendy Williams show. He ended up suing the show, like the producers, for wrongful termination. He sued them for $10 million and the lawsuit is still ongoing right now. So I don't know how that's gonna end up. When Wendy filed for divorce, um, Kevin said that he wanted child support, which their son was 18, and spousal support. And then a month after the divorce was finalized, he gets into an altercation with his son, Kevin Jr., about the fact that he wants spousal support. Okay, so this is crazy. So what ended up happening was they actually were at a parking lot, okay? And Kevin Jr. is telling his dad like, why are you asking for spousal support? And basically just like telling his dad like, what the fuck? And then the dad, Kevin Sr. tells his son, your mom is brainwashing you, you're letting her brainwash you, and ends up putting his son in a chokehold. Well, Junior ends up punching Senior in the face to get out of the chokehold and it turns into this altercation and the police get called. Kevin Senior decides not to press charges on his son and we don't really know sort of what happened from there, but clearly there were some issues there about that. Also around this time is when Wendy Williams publicly reveals that she has lymphedema. This is me with lymphedema. Yep. There, yep, there it is. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's the swelling that she has in her legs. And she says it's it's incurable, but there's ways to manage it. And she tried to make light of it on her show. She says, it's not going to kill me, but I do have a machine. And how dare you talk about the swelling of it all. Behind the scenes, what's really going on is that um, Wendy Williams is drunk on air a lot. I'm moving out of Sober House in just a few days, you know? It'll be Wendy on The situation was really bad and everybody on the show, like who worked there knew it. It got to the point where producers actually texted the executives, the higher ups, to tell them like, she's not sober, we don't know what we should do. The way that Wendy would film the show is that she would film twice a day. The first one would be the episode that would go live that day and then the second taping would be for later in the week, but she would also film that live. Producers would end up sending the second one, like the second taping, to the executives for them to approve it because they felt like she seemed drunk. Literally every single time, except for once, the executives felt like Wendy was just like okay enough for them to broadcast the episode, except for one time where they felt like she was way too fucked up and they ended up playing a rerun instead. But for me, I'm like, damn, that goes to show you either she was a very high functioning alcoholic or they just really were milking the shit out of her and didn't care what she looked like because there were some episodes where she was like clearly out of it and those episodes aired. Like I said, you know, personal life shit, career good because as the lymphedema and the divorce, all that shit was happening, she ends up getting a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. She has like a wax figure made of her in Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. In January of 2020, her divorce was finalized. And the terms of the uh, settlement were that they both were not doing spousal support for each other, but Wendy did keep a $1 million life insurance policy on herself that would go to Kevin if she died, but she could reduce the amount of the policy every year. She also kept him on her health insurance, and then they also agreed to split 
the money from the uh, when they sold their house, they put their house on the market and they were going to split the proceeds from the house. And Wendy also gave Kevin $250,000, just a lump sum for living expenses since she had him out of the house. So there, and then Wendy kept all of her business things that were in her name. And then her, um, husband, Kevin, he had some passion project like side businesses that he had he kept those and he was able to keep his vehicles he had a ferrari and a rolls royce and stuff like that and uh that's how they did that then also apparently wendy had this lump sum that she gave um kevin but we don't know how much that is and they were done she was not required to pay him monthly spousal support or anything but but she did anyway she still gave him spousal support every month for years after the divorce, even though she didn't have to, okay? I don't know why she did, but she did. That's her money. She does whatever the fuck she wants with it. She started having scandal after scandal after scandal on her show. It was like within a few months, she managed to offend so many different communities. First, it was the cleft lip community. He's got one of those, um, what do you call it? Cleft lip. Yeah. Cleft palate. Yeah. He's, he's got yeah. this. Yeah. He's got this. I find it to be, I find it to be very attractive. She came out after that. She's like, I apologize to the cleft community. I'm going to make a donation. And after that, she offended the gay community when it was Valentine's Day. And she was like, clap if you're going to do something for Galentine's. And then some of the gay men clapped and she was like, not you. Clap if you're participating in Galentine's Day. <laughs> well, if you're a man and you're clapping, you're not even a part of this. Okay. I don't care if you're gay. You don't get a mency every 28 days and stop wearing our skirts and our heels. <laughs> You'll never be the woman that we are. And she was like, I love the LGBTQ plus community and they support me and I'm so sorry. Then after that, she got in trouble because she made this joke about a woman who was murdered. She was pushed um, from a building and fell to her death. And this woman happened to be an ex-girlfriend or fiance, sorry, of Drew Carey, who had that, um, he hosted The Price is Right. Remember? Come on down. You're the next contestant on The Price is Right. Well, mentioning that this was Drew Carey's ex and how he says, come on down on the show, right? When, when, when they talked about her falling, she was like, come on down. She was killed, not by Drew, but by, by the ex. Come on down. Like, oh my God. So then um, COVID happened, okay? And it was not good for Wendy. If you didn't even have any issues with addiction, COVID was a mindfuck on its own when it came down to the lockdowns and the shutdown and the quarantine, all that shit. She was in New York where they had a pretty hardcore lockdown. And so her already having these issues being on lockdown only made them worse. She was filming too because they started doing Wendy at home. Live from Wendy's apartment in New York, it's the Wendy Williams Show at home. Hello. Bacon, blue cheese, both smothered by hot sauce and maple syrup. You don't want to see me eat? Then you might not want to be here, okay? This is what people do. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. I've been exhausted by this story about Playboy Cardi. Do you know him? He's so cute. He's Iggy Azalea's boyfriend. While we're all quarantining, he's out after midnight in Georgia. He was pulled over by the cops because he did not have good license plates. They said, excuse me, sorry, but that's what you get because you know you live in Georgia. Hey. When the cops pulled him over and he put the window down, there were pills on the floor. He's doing time for this. Iggy Azalea wanted to be black. All right. So Tori Spelling, everyone. Yes, we're talking about Tori. You know, I love that family. American Express is suing her not once but twice. She owes money everywhere. The Bureau re uh, reached out to Mama June. Now, we paid the $30 for her to give... Um, her greeting. Hey y'all, this is Mama June, and I just want to wish Wendy Williams well during this quarantine, girl. <laughs> the tooth is still broken. I don't want to be mean, 
You know, she got back to us within like a minute. Oh. Mm. She was like live streaming from her home uh, for the show and she was out of it. Like, like she was out of it. Sorry, I didn't greet you properly. <laughs> People are just, I just. <laughs> her DJ, who DJ Boof, he used to like DJ for a show. He said that in May of 2020, he went to visit Wendy at her apartment and she was unconscious and had to be taken to the hospital with an ambulance with an ambulance, with an ambulance, um, with an ambulance on, in an ambulance, in an ambulance, um, who cares? Why am I, whatever. Anyway, and then she needed several blood transfusions. And then it got worse because by the end of 2020, Wendy's mom died and she was a very close to her mom. And the people who knew Wendy said that she did not actually quote process the death or grief instead she started drinking even more and using alcohol to cope even more by the time the shutdown was over and it was time for her to go back to filming in a studio audience she was lit she ended up filming her last episode on july 2021 here's wendy Yeah. yeah. It's goopy. You're going to get all your hands. Do you care? No. Okay. Uh-oh. Problem. I understood that um, someone has a birthday coming up. Sunday. Yeah, my birthday on Sunday. Happy birthday, dear Wendy. I didn't even think we'd make it past a, a six weeks sneak peek, honestly. So the idea that we are wrapping up our 12th season is miraculous. So we'll see you in two months and two weeks, September 20th. And I'll see you next time on Wendy. Bye-bye. Yeah. In September, she was supposed to go on this promo tour for the new season, the 13th season. Well, in early September, there were these photos of her looking kind of sickly, wearing her like lymphedema socks. And then there was this article saying that she was hospitalized and had to have like some psychiatric help. And so when September 20th rolled around and Wendy Williams was not able to do the promo tour and it got pushed back, her staff at the show started freaking out because they already knew she had drinking problem and illnesses and they were seeing these things in the news and now she wasn't showing up to work so they were kind of freaking out by the time it was september 30th 2021 the producers of the show went to wendy williams apartment and they wanted to put wendy on a zoom call to the staffers at the show 100 plus staffers so that she could answer questions and talk to them and they would feel like not so panicked about the situation well that backfired horribly and the zoom call only lasted two and a half minutes before the producers abruptly ended it and the staffer said that like wendy was basically incoherent like she was just saying it's fine it's fine i'm gonna get back but she was going off on tangents and wasn't making sense like she was out of it and so they were looking at this saying oh my god she can't even do a two minute zoom how the hell is she gonna do a one hour show live it kept getting delayed and delayed because wendy wasn't able to actually film the show and so the network was getting impatient. According to the producers, the network was telling the producers, you guys need to put out new episodes or else we're going to cut the show and put something else on at that time. So the producers come up with an idea to have guest hosts for a few weeks until they can figure out what's going on with Wendy. And so that's when they started having the guest hosts, different hosts all the time. And they did this for several weeks. And now it was Thanksgiving of 2021. And Wendy decides to go to Florida to spend the holidays with her family, her son, her sister, her brother. They all live in Florida. So when she goes there, according to her family, she was doing better because she wasn't drinking. She was eating better, living better, surrounded by family. And it was good for her to be in Florida. 
The thing is, once the holidays were over, she was expected to come back to New York to film the show. And so the producers were like, hey, are you coming back? Are you coming back? And that's when they say that Wendy stopped answering their phone calls. It actually seemed like someone had her phone. Her manager was fired. And they just lost touch with Wendy. And it went on for months and months and months. It went on for so long that by February 2022, so several months later, after not hearing from Wendy, the producers decided, you know what? The network said, we need to figure out what we're doing. Is it the Wendy show or is it someone else? And so they decided, we haven't heard from Wendy. It's someone else. Who is that? Sherry Shepard. She was one of the guest hosts and they noticed that she had the highest ratings from all the other guest hosts. And so they decided to cancel the Wendy Williams show and replace it with the Sherry Shepard show. Well, wouldn't you know, after they did that, they end up getting a phone call from Wendy Williams. They haven't heard from her in months. And she goes, what's this? I'm hearing about my show being canceled. And they're like, well, we, had, we didn't hear from you for months. And so we had to do something. The network was pressuring us. Like we had to do something. And so she's like, so who's going to be on air at 10 a.m.? And they're like, Sherry Shepard. And then Wendy's like, well, can I go on at 11? And they were like, not really, but they were like, listen, we want to make something work with you. Like, we want you. We've always wanted you, but you just need to be okay. You have to show us that you're okay. You have to come here and like, we need to have you see some doctors and stuff and just like, make sure you're okay. And um, that never happened. Instead, what would happen is that over the next few months, Wendy would call them and they would have that same exact conversation I just told you over and over again. And they felt like it was happening for Wendy for the first time every time. Like she forgot. She would call them, be like, well, what's this about my show being canceled? Like, can I come back? Same, same. So clearly something was not well. Right around when her show was canceled and replaced with Sherry Shepard, Wendy Williams' bank account was frozen by Wells Fargo. Okay, this is February 2022. So this is a big part of the documentary that came out recently and what happened to Wendy's finances, like who's at fault here. So I want to tell you what I found. And there's certain parts of the story that there are like two versions, which I'll give you both and then you can decide. But basically what is agreed upon is that in January of 2022, the month before her account was frozen, Wendy Williams and her son, Kevin Jr., and her attorney, LaShawn Thomas, all three went to a Wells Fargo bench, branch, branch, sorry, in Florida, and they wanted Wendy Williams' bank statements. Now, the reason for this is where the story kind of separates, because according to Wendy Williams' attorney, the reason that they went to get the bank statements was because the paper statements were sent to Wendy's apartment in New York and Wendy did not have online banking. And so she wanted to get copies of them since she was in Florida and that her son, Kevin, wanted to also set up online banking for her so that she could access her account while in Florida. The other version of the story is that Wendy wanted her bank statements because she was going to switch banks because her longtime financial advisor, Lori Schiller, who worked for Wells Fargo and she had a relationship with, was being shady and was, quote, mismanaging her funds. And so she wanted to switch banks. And that's why she asked for her bank statements. So I don't know which one it is. What is agreed upon is that the branch manager at the bank said, okay, I need to speak to your financial advisor. That's Lori Schiller, the one I told you about. When the branch manager speaks to Lori on the phone, Lori says, sure, no problem. I just want to speak to Wendy Williams alone. Like put her in a room where no one is with her and I'll talk to her because she was suspicious that Wendy was being influenced and financially manipulated. And why is that? I shall tell you. First of all, according to the people at the bank at Wells Fargo, Wendy Williams seemed mentally not there. And also 
Wendy had never gone to a bank branch before and asked to see documents and her statements and stuff with other people who were also going to see her documents and stuff. They felt like that was a red flag, especially because her son, quote, spent around $100,000 on Wendy's personal American Express card, which was said to be unauthorized by Williams and had been demanding that his mother's advisor pay the bill instead of Williams herself, which helped lead to her accounts being frozen. When Lori said she wanted to speak to Wendy alone in a room, Wendy said, well, can I at least bring my lawyer with me? Lori, the financial advisor, refused and did not want to speak to Wendy with her lawyer there. And the reason for that is that they believed the lawyer had a conflict of interest because LaShawn Thomas, Wendy's lawyer, actually used to represent her husband, the one that she had the divorce with and everything like that. So they felt like the lawyer had a conflict of interest and the son may have been misusing her funds. And so they did not feel like these two people were trustworthy and they wanted to see what Wendy Williams wanted when she was alone. Okay, that's what that's what the story was. What ended up happening though is since Lori refused and Wendy did also refuse to speak to her alone, Wendy ended up leaving the bank with her son and her lawyer without getting her bank statements and without setting up online banking. As a result of this whole thing, her account was frozen. They said, quote, due to financial exploitation, dementia, or undue influence. Wendy then files this affidavit through her attorney, LaShawn Thomas, saying that despite my decision to terminate Schiller as a result of her improper conduct in relation to my accounts, Wells Fargo continues to deny me access to my financial assets and statements. We've got the family and they're like, listen, you may think $100,000 on a Amex card is a lot, but it's really not. For us, okay, he spends a hundred thousand dollars on Uber Eats, a hundred and twenty thousand dollars on one of his birthday parties. His rent is, you know, a hundred thousand dollars or eighty thousand dollars. Like, this is nothing, okay. And because she was visiting in Florida, and we put everything on one card, it looked like a lot, but it really wasn't what it looked like. And her son had power of attorney at the time, but then when the bank was frozen and stuff, he didn't have power. Of attorney anymore. People saying that this Lori Schiller financial advisor, you know, was scamming Wendy and using her and doing something messed up with the money. And then when Wendy was trying to do something about it, she flipped it on Wendy and said that she had unsound mind so that she wouldn't get in trouble. It got so bad that Lori Schiller had to actually hire like security all the time around her apartment because she was getting death threats and stuff like that. So it got to the point where not only was Wendy's account at Wells Fargo frozen, but she was then put under financial guardianship by a judge and she couldn't actually access her money or even spend her money the way she wanted to, like she was under a guardianship. So May 2022, Wendy is placed under a guardianship and now she's back in New York. She can't be in Florida around her family anymore. And she's got a um, new manager. His name is Will Selby. He used to be a jewelry designer that she's like party with and now he's her manager and then she has a publicist her name is Sean Zanotti just a month after Wendy Williams was placed under this guardianship she was photographed passed out at a Louis Vuitton store with a glass of champagne next to her so it didn't look like the guardianship was helping her like get sober or get in a better state of mind and then in June, she did this interview with TMZ Live. Uh, welcome back. Hey, Wendy. Well, welcome to my formal apartment. When you're famous, podcasts will make more money for me being famous. So, podcast. Where will I go? I'm not sure. Europe? You know, the France? By the way, doesn't it look gorgeous? Oh, do you see me sitting on my throne? Excuse me, no longer many money, okay? Okay, I'm no longer on the Wendy Williams show. Bow out gracefully. Huge diamonds. Do you see this? <laughs> and Will and I are in partnership. Like I told you, Will did all this for me. What we're going to do, podcast. You mentioned Will a couple times. 
um, will your manager and executive producer, Will Selby. You know I have lymphedema. You know what that is, correct? I know. Lymphedema is this. Do you see this right here? Law. Okay. Hold right. up, please. Will, hold up. I can't hold it higher. Yeah, we can see. Yeah. Okay, do you see this? Yes. Normally, I would be in a wheelchair. I'm not in a wheelchair. I stand up. How are you feeling, um, just physically? Better than you. Kathy Bates has lymphedema entirely, except for her boobs and her ass. Yeah, I, I I'm like that. really, really sorry. Yeah, I, I did not realize you had that. Wow. Excuse me. I live in a gorgeous apartment. Also very true. You know, looking forward to the podcast. We got to scoot, but um, Wendy, it's, re- it's great having you on. Thank you for coming to my apartment. Well, thank you for allowing yeah, us to be your for guest. Thank you for inviting us in. Bye. We'll, we'll talk to you later. Soon. Uh, we are going to take a break. Yes. Uh, when we come back, there is uh, some trouble ahead for Jake Paul's next fight. A few months later, August 2022, Wendy Williams s- agrees to start filming a documentary with Lifetime, which is the documentary we're talking about, which a lot of people say she should never have done and how was it approved and everything well this was the team that was around her when she started filming the documentary a month after they start filming they put wendy williams in a wellness facility her manager does right probably damage control and so she's at this wellness facility for 2 months and in those 2 months that she's at the facility and they're filming the documentary her ex-husband and her son's finances go to shit okay first of all her husband, her ex-husband, Kevin, who she was paying alimony to, even though she didn't have to, when she was put under this financial guardianship, they stopped giving him his monthly payments. He, in November, filed a complaint with the court being like, she's not giving me the money. She doesn't have to give me and now I can't pay my bills. Okay, let me let me read it. Okay. In the filing, he claimed that the lack of payments had negatively impacted his life. Quote, I have fallen behind on most of my bills. I currently live in a community that requires payments to the homeowners association and I'm behind on that bill. He said that if his fees weren't paid, he would be put out and the house would be foreclosed. Quote, my life has been greatly affected since the plaintiff stopped making payments. The judge was like, get a job. She doesn't have to pay you. Like, fuck. First of all, you cheated on her, had a baby on her, beat her, betrayed her. She's paying you. She doesn't have to pay you. And you're actually going to file something in the court to be like, make her pay me while she's at rehab. Also, um... And the mistress, yeah, she left him because he didn't have money anymore. And so now he probably owes her child support too. So, I mean, you know, karma's only a bitch if you are. Her son was also going through it because he had this apartment in Miami, okay? And his mom had paid for one year's rent, which was $100,000 up front the year prior. But when... The financial guardianship started in February 22. He stopped getting money from his mom, so he couldn't pay his rent. So the last time he paid rent was February. And then in August 2022, when she started filming for the documentary, he got this notice from the apartment being like, you're $70,000 behind in rent. And by December, they evicted him. After all this stuff happens, Wendy returns from the wellness center and starts filming the documentary again. And you are hearing from her son and it seems like they're estranged. And then there's an episode where she goes back to Florida and reunites with him after not seeing or talking to him for a long time. And it's kind of cold, like he shows up late with his uh, cousin, her nephew, and they don't even hug and it's very weird. And you could just tell the relationship is strained. And then um, also that year in 2022, Kevin, senior the ex he has another issue which is um with his ferrari he ends up 
filing an ins a claim with the insurance company. It's called Essentia, the insurance company, and he sues them in 2022 because he says they did not pay out a policy that he had on his 2018 Ferrari California T two-door retractable hardtop. He said that the car stopped working after it was left outside with the top open during a rainstorm in uh, on November 11th, 2021, and that he said in the lawsuit that the insurance policy was supposed to cover it, but it didn't. Well, the insurance company was like, actually, we got some weather experts and we checked and um, it was not raining on that day in that place. So the damage that your car sustained, we it's not covered by us. And it then turns into this whole thing where now the insurance company is like, we want Verizon to get all your text messages from that time period. And also... Um, they wanted documents that revealed exactly how much money he got from Wendy Williams, and the judge approved that. So that's still a pending case, too. We'll see. I don't know. In spring of 2023, the documentary shows that Wendy basically took this trip to L.A. without telling anyone except for her publicist, Sean Zanotti, who she took with her. And she didn't tell her manager, Will. And she just basically went to L.A. and she wanted to drink and have a good time. And Will, her manager, calls her all pissed. He's like yelling at her and telling her, you know, like, you need to get back here now. Like, get your ass back here. Wendy doesn't want to come back. And then Sean, the publicist has got her set up with this meeting with like NBC for another talk show and Wendy really believes like she's going to get another talk show but she's like not in the condition like to speak to these executives and really pitch herself but this publicist is going to take her there and sets up the meeting anyway like hoping to like make a deal and everything like that and people are like damn that's really fucked up and Wendy's like I want to show them my feet and I want to like take off my wig and I want to tell them what I want to do and the whole thing seems really sad and depressing and Wendy Williams repeatedly in the documentary like does not know what is going on or where she is or things that you think she would know she doesn't know like there's this whole scene where they're going around and around in New York um where she used to work at the smoke shop try to get a vape but like she keeps saying it's the wrong vape and it's the wrong store but the driver's like this is the store and this is the vape and she's like lashing out and getting rude she's like tying the publicist like you're you're it's like stupid like go and get it don't take what she's taking so long and then she tells the driver like you're just a driver at one point she even told her publicist like you need to get liposuction but like your hair is everything and then even the nail lady she like freaking called her an idiot or something like that or are you stupid or something and um they say that she is diagnosed with dementia, like uh, aphasia and uh, a type of dementia that may be alcohol induced. And when you read about it, it says that some of the symptoms can be like being rude and mean and lashing out, getting angry, being impulsive uh, because they're frustrated. They don't understand what's going on. So some people are like, she's only lashing out because of her mental illness. And then other people are like, no, she's just a bitch. And I'm like, you know, it's probably both. The show kind of carries on showing you Wendy out of it and in all these different situations. And then it sort of abruptly ends. They talk about the producer showing up and Wendy's eyes are rolling back in her head. And then all of a sudden they cut to like her apartment being empty and, and they're like, we're selling the apartment and she's at a facility and like, where is she? And her family doesn't know where she is. And that's like the title of the documentary, like, where's Wendy? And it's like so weird that then they're saying, oh, she's sober now, she's better, but then you don't see her. All of a sudden we can't, like, we don't have any evidence of her being better or anything. It's just no more Wendy on the show. It's just her family and everyone else talking. It's like really fucking weird. They stopped filming in April of 2023. And so... In February earlier this year, 2024, is when this documentary was released. Well, before it was released, the Guardian, Wendy's Guardian, her name is Sabrina Morrissey, but they had her name censored throughout the documentary. She actually sued to try to get, to, to stop the documentary from being released. But the judge decided to let it be released, and it was, but like I said, her name was censored, but because she followed those court documents and stuff, her name was released. And people... There was like a lot of people who felt like the documentary was exploitative. Exploitative, is that a word? Was 
exploiting Wendy and should not have been filmed. The producers had to come out and be like, well, if she, we knew she had dementia, we would have never filmed her, never picked up the camera. But then people were like, well, but you did find out she had it at some point. You kept filming. And then even after you filmed, if you found out, you still like published the documentary. So, you know, what is it? Which one is it? And um, then there are other people that are like, no, Wendy was like a bitch to people and this is karma. She gets what's coming to her. We don't feel bad like it is what it is, you know? And that's kind of where it is right now. Apparently, Wendy has fired her publicist and manager, the jewelry designer and Sean Zanotti. And they're saying that she's at a facility and she's doing better, but we really don't know. Nobody's really seen or heard from her since the documentary came out, like in person, a video or whatever. So I don't know. I hope she's doing well. Let me know what you guys think. Um, but that's pretty much the Wendy Williams story as I found it. Um, hopefully this was informative and answered some questions you may have had. Um, and yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.